So I want to explain the difference in an MVC model, in a model, the difference between a uh, foreign key property and a navigation property. So what I have opened up is uh, an MVC app just called Movies. This, this is a movie application tracking movies. Um, in my models folder, I have a movie class and it has a relationship with a genre class. And so a movie has a one-to-one -one relationship. One movie can have one genre. And so when I go into my movie class at the bottom, I've got two properties, um, one labeled a foreign key property. And if you take a look, foreign keys are typically a single column um, genre ID. So in the genre, we've got a genre ID. Now it's a string, so the data types have to match, and typically they're ints, but in this case it's a string. That's not the important part. But you can see this is a very traditional, uh, you know, kind of primary key. It, it typically it would be a genre ID in the genre table. And therefore, in the movie table, a genre ID is a foreign key value. So we touched on those normalized database fundamentals, primary key, foreign keys. And I want to show you in my database, if I open up a movie, we do have a genre ID, which is a string. Okay, this is a foreign key value in my table. And I should be able to look at my uh, designer of my table And you can see in the SQL code that I've got a foreign key column generated on the genre ID column. So genre ID is in fact a foreign key. Here you can see it in the GUI. And, and that is a traditional foreign key property. Okay, what is different in this MVC world is notice we are also storing a property that is type genre. Okay, now we call this a navigation property. Now we call it, that's what it's called. Okay, this is an entire genre object. Okay, and it is used to help you navigate down into uh, a genre and retrieve, um, well, what does a genre have? A genre has a name. So in the, there's, there's two parts that make this useful. So I, I've shown you how the genre ID is what we're storing in the database, but let me show you how this navigation property is used. First, you have to include the navigation property in your controller. So in my home controller, I'm selecting from my context, my movies, so I'm selecting all of my movies, and I'm including all of the genre objects. So for each movie, include that genre okay and then order your movies by the movie name okay so this is going to help us again navigate into the genre table and pull out the movie let me show you when i load this home page okay and so when i when i load the view we're not showing a genre id for each movie we are showing the genre name and so if i pull this up each movie is not showing a for action it is showing the name and we can do that because of the navigation property okay so first we have to kind of include that navigation property in our query and then in our view if i go to my home view notice here our view is a list of movies right well we can say hey give me the movie name give me the movie year and then navigate into this line right here, line 24, allows us to navigate into the genre and pull out the genre's name for display on the front end. Okay, so this is very common in Entity Framework, uh, EF Core, that we're doing, to have both foreign key properties and navigation properties okay this will be something that we do repetitively in this class okay so you'll see this a lot and i just wanted to highlight that as 
um, something that is definitely a little bit different and worth uh, worth revisiting. Any questions on the difference between foreign keys and navigation property? Again, foreign keys basically for the database and navigation properties basically are for our front end. So, cool.